Okay, part two. I actually skipped the the slide para sa task one, but it is discussed only lang siya by word. Task one. This is the start of the IELTS exam. In this part, you will be entering a room. Lubuksan mo yung doorknob. Papasok sa loob. Sabi ng examiner, the, the examiner will motion you to sit down. So once the examiner does that, you sit down and you thank the examiner. Sir, the examiner is not asking me to sit down. He just stand right there beside a chair. Yes, you don't sit down unless you're stated otherwise. Okay, that's one thing. The examiner will introduce himself or herself in this part. Hi, my name is Ian Wall and I'll be your examiner for today. Can I see your ID, please? Yeah, ganun na. Tos, umpisa na kayo. What is your name? Describe yourself. So, kaya nakalagay itong describe yourself in the first slide of task one is because describe yourself is very common. Sometimes, an examiner could go on a path where he or she will ask you a question specifically or the examiner will just let you do your business and ask you directly, describe yourself. So if the examiner asks you to describe yourself, let yourself loose. Sabihin mo about your name, your address, um, where do you live exactly, are you working or are you studying, your age, your hobbies. So I think for 25 seconds, meron ka na dapat naka-ready na template sa isip mo. Paano kung tinanong ako ng examiner, describe yourself. Hi, my name is Kevin Mangalabnan. I'm currently residing here in Cabanatuan City because my work here is to teach English to my students. So my hobbies include watching movies, uploading videos, playing musical instruments. My family consists of five members, including my mom, my aunt, my sister, and my nephew. So, that's who I am. Ganun lang. Katapos na tayo. 25 seconds, that's enough. Okay? So, you just wait for further questions and stop. Next is your personal information. Ito yung mga pwede mong include. Your name, nickname, age, birth date, birthplace, civil status, parents, siblings, hometown, educational background, where did you study? Did you just recently graduate? Or... Did you graduate for a long time? So you may to cover the topics. Uh, work experience, type of work, place of work, length of service, duties and responsibilities, physical description, height, weight, colors, and other physical characteristics. Personally, describing yourself is what separates you from all the people on the earth. Always remember that you are unique. Things included in describing yourself are types of personality. Are you an outgoing person? Are you an adventurous person? Kasi mong sabihin, masipag ka, Huwag mo sabihing hardworking kasi napakagasgas na ng hardworking. Pwede mo naman gamitin si diligent in replacement for hardworking. Hobbies, general interests, things you like and dislike, future plans, things you might be doing if you're given a chance to do it. And unique things about you. Okay, so if you don't know how to describe yourself fully, pwede mo i-complete yung following phrases na I'm good at, I'm known for, and I enjoy. So I'm good at borrowing money from people and not being seen again. I'm known for borrowing money from people not being seen again. And I enjoy borrowing money from people not being seen again. Pag yun ang sagot mo, te, stapador ka. <laughs> Alright? So you don't do that. So I'm good at what? I'm good at cooking. I'm known for playing video games. I enjoy my favorite cup of tea. Reading my favorite book on a lazy Sunday afternoon. That's, wow. Describe your hometown. This is the second most common question in the IELTS speaking sentence. this. Actually, minsan di na nila tatanong yung pangalan mo. Di na siya magkatong describe yourself. Diretso yan. Do you live in a house or in an apartment? Diretso yan. So, kailangan mo siya agad sagutin. Okay. Directly, syempre. So, I'm currently residing in the flat provided by the accommodation in my workplace, comparing with my present address, my permanent address in the Philippines, I could say that, yeah, you have to be talkative, you have to be assertive, 
you have to be the one who control the test and you have to let the examiner to learn that you are the one in charge by being assertive talkative and providing as much detail as you can so pagsabing describe your hometown my hometown is in Gapan City Navaysiha it is situated in the southernmost portion of my province and since it is one of the provinces known as the rice granary of the Philippines one of the livelihoods of the people in my hometown includes farming and agriculture but Unlike any other towns, Kapan is also known for sleeper making. That's why we are called as the sleeper capital of the north. Sabihin ng mga nakakarinig, wow, galing-galing naman ni Sir. Siyempre, kinabisado ko na yan. Tagal-tagal ko nang tinuturo yan. Hindi ko pa makabisado yan. O kaya kayo, Diyos ko, sarili niyong lugar na tinitirhan, diba? hindi niyo kayang i-describe. Mm, problema yan. O ngayon, practice na kayo. Ano nga, no? Pag tinanong sa akin, describe your hometown. Siyempre, kailangan pangalan ng hometown. Describe, describe ka ng hometown. Maganda, luntian, yan, no? Kayo mga establishment. Tapos biglang, wala naman palang pangalan yung hometown. Eh, san, saan yun? Diba? Ano yung paraiso? Diba? So, that's it. So, gra- geographic information, type of community, location, size, population, climate, and environment. Uniquely, distinctively, pwede din magtanong ng what are the common customs in your hometown? Well, we actually have different kinds of feasts in my hometown. More specifically, when we celebrate sa religious activities, they involve making of certain rice cakes, which, are, which can only be found in my hometown. So it's really amusing. For like five straight days, people will be very happy with celebrations on the streets and with lots of food, definitely. Food is the one that is the most important thing in this custom for my province. Ayan, pwede mo ding yan. Delicacies. Things that are only found in your hometown or what your town is famous for. To describe your house, I was asked with the same question. With Sir Irvin, with Sir Philip, with my best friend, describe your house. So their answer, as you know, Sir Irvin, ang respanya dyan is, Symbolic staircase. So, tanong is, what is your favorite part of the house? He answered, symbolic staircase. Like, you will not hear, uh, you will not meet a person in your life who would answer staircase as his favorite part of the house. So, na bigay niya yung symbolism nun, because the flight of stairs symbolizes the hardships he faced. The flight of stairs where he sat in the middle symbolizes his current situation now. And the stairs above him signifies all the steps he need to take to reach his dream, his goal, to reach the top, the second floor. My answer was rooftop. Even though we don't have rooftop, we only have veranda. So I'm not telling you guys to be a liar. All I'm trying to say is that never answer bedroom or kitchen as your favorite part of the house because they are very common. They're very common answers. So if you could answer living room, if you could answer dining area. Dining area is not the same as kitchen because kitchen is where you cook. Dining area is where you eat together with your family to inquire about each one's day, how each and every one of days went. So that's uh, Yeah. My best friend's answer was like, window pane. Tapos ang sabi niya, favorite part of the house is window pane. So when I... Move the curtain so that I would be able to see the view of the beach more clearly. Sabi ko, walang yaka. Ano naman beach sa Gapan? Ilog? Diyos ko ka. Di Hindi <laughs> daw niya kasi alam yung tawag doon. <laughs> sa, that's a river bank. Alright. So yeah, you have to ask yourself now. What if my question is describe your house? How would I be able to answer it? So my answer was, ito yung aking version. Ano? My favorite part of the house is rooftop. Especially after eating dinner, I would just stay here for two hours from 7 to 9 and listen to my favorite songs while I stare at the night sky with a lot of stars. So it serves as my personal sanctuary. That's why I love spending time at night in this place. Mm. Tapos. Very simple, very brief, precise. That's it. Job. Are you working or are you studying? When the examiner asks you this this question, 
you say that you are working even though you are studying here. Sir, resign na po ako two months ago. Say that you are still working. Mas okay yun kaysa sabi mo na nag-aaral ka preparing for IELTS because when you do that, the examiner will think, oh, ah, nag-prepare ka. Sige, hirapan natin ang tanong. What can you say about the urban legends of Uzbekistan? Maan <laughs> natin matanong ng ganon. So, sabihin mo, I'm currently working as a nurse in this blah blah hospital for yada yada years now. Hmm, that's it. And I am assigned at the pediatric ward. Okay, so tatanungin, oh, what can you say about your job? Never tell anything malicious. Never say anything um, bad about your workplace. Even though tinanong what you don't like about your job. Diba? What can you say about your job? Well, being a nurse allows me to help more patients achieve their optimum well-being. Wow, diba? Galing mo te. Lakas maka nightingale. So that's what you have to, to achieve here. So what you don't like about your job? Well, there's tons of paperwork in my job. And if we could only limit this time for paperwork, then I think we could spend more time dealing with the patient's needs. But right now, my hospital is undergoing some system automation that allows us to easily input our notes for the patient. And I think in the future, we would be able to spend more time with the patient and do less paperwork. Mm, diba? You just have to be talkative and assertive with your responses. All these questions are typically used only to start a conversation. May mga tanong pa dyan, tulad ng, what is your favorite color? Do you like watching television? What is your favorite food? Do you like to drink coffee? Diba? Do you wake up early in the morning? When was the last time you went to the mall? Family? School? Subject? Mga topics sa tungkol sa'yo, puro yun ang task 1. Now, ito si task 2. Guys, you know, we could disregard task 1, task 3's importance. I'm not downplaying their their parts in the test, but what I mean is, task 2 is by far the most important part of the test. So when I say that this is the most important part of the test, we don't want to miss any single question here. Because when you do so, laglag. As I've mentioned, as your coach and lecturer, I ask examiners during symposiums, and most of the questions that tinatanong namin sa kanila is what about task 2 in speaking? Like, task 1, yeah. May hindi na sagot, it's okay. We can let it go. Pero sir, what if perfect itong si part 1? Perfect itong si part 3. Like, pang 9 yung kalibre. Pero yung task, sir, may namiss lang na bullet point. Dalagang hindi niya nasagot. The examiners mentioned that that person will not get 6.5 anymore. Kaya nga, ang tanong natin, especially the process of recheck, as the process of recheck is really a very juicy one. Because we would be getting 6.5 at first. Hopefully, hindi nyo ma-experience. And then, ipapa-recheck, babalik yung score, magiging 7, 7.5. I've had a student even from 6 manage to get 7.5. A 1.5 whole point jump after the recheck process. And to make things juicier, they would even return the money that you have paid for. So, talagang win-win situation sa atin. 6K? Uh, for only 6k uh, and then the money will come back pwede mong pambili ng shoes yun pwede mong pambili ng um, whatever you want pants or shirt or bag no? Na, okay so ang tanong lang natin tatanong ko yung student well nasagot mo ba tong task 2 may namiss ka ba na bullet point sa task 2 ah uh, sir opo eh wag ka na magparecheck retake ang ating gagawin dyan kasi pag may namiss ka lang sa part 2 na bullet point obviously that's will really take a huge toll on our score. What to do here? In task 2, you'll be given three things. Okay? The cue card that contains your question, a pencil, and a paper. Take note that the task card given to you by the examiner will be taken back afterwards. So you have to make an outline of the notes. Most of my students na nakikita ko gumagawa sila ng parang hahatiin nila sa apat yung paper, maglalagay sila ng answer, tapos parang ipapaklockwise nila. I didn't teach that. I'm not saying na hindi okay yung technique na yun or pwedeng gamitin yung technique. All I'm saying is, if you're going to do that, you could miss some bullet points. Meron kasing mga topics sa task 2 at some bullet points actually contain five 
So, paano? Hindi ka kasyan sa apat may main topic ka pa pag siksiksiksikin mo siya ngayon. So, we might not able to include everything kapag ganon. So, you also have to make sure that you will keep the time in check. Meron kasi siyang parang 2 minute na mark na makikita mo talaga siyang countdown timer. So, kailangan ma-cover mo entirely yung bullet points and main topic um, sa loob ng 2 minutes. So, makikita mo siya like, oh, 1 minute, 25 seconds. Nasa third bullet point ako, last bullet point na. Kailangan ko na siyang sabihin. Okay. Para maka-jump ka na. Now, sir, uh, the examiner will get the task card back po, right? Yes. What about the paper na pinag-outline na namin ng answer? Actually, they will not get the paper which you outline your answers because pwede mong gamitin yon to help you guide yourself na ma-include lahat ng bullet points na, na i-outline mo. So, kailangan-kailangan po talaga no? na mag-outline. Uh, you can actually glance at the paper. So, nakatingin ka sa examiner. Imagine this. I'm sitting upright. Nakatingin ako sa examiner. Nag-discuss. I am going to tell you about the restaurant I like eating the most ever since when I was a kid. And this restaurant is... Ayan. Tapos, tingin mo sa baba. Oh, what is this restaurant? Uh, when was the first time I ate this restaurant? And then, where can this restaurant be found? Diba? So, puro yun. Check-check mo siya. Titingin-tingin ka. Tapos, check. Tingin ka sa paper. Tapos, tingin. Tingin sa oras. Tingin sa examiner. So, that, that's the process of doing task two. Okay? So, organize mo yung answer, guys. Wala ka na pong i-jumble dyan. Kasi the bullet points themselves are arranged in a way kung paano mo siya mas ma explain more cohesively. Well, if if you want to mention the fourth bullet point before the third one, it's actually okay. Ang target kasi natin dyan is ma-mention mo siya lahat. Hindi naman sinabi dapat in that order. Pero mas okay lang if you will follow the order in which those bullet points occur. So, 3 to 4 minutes tatagal ito. Meron kang 1 minute preparation time. So, ito na nga yung bibigay sa'yo. Prepare to discuss any topic from people and to explain their significance to you. So, 1 minute to make notes if you wish. So, they usually get the task card back from you before you start speaking. Be sure to answer all the questions. Do not limit yourself to the question. Provide as much detail and information. You will not be interrupted by the examiner during your delivery time. Unless you exceed 2 minutes, stop talking when the examiner tells you to do so. Actually, bago kayo matapos sa task 2, may isa, dalawang follow-up question pa si examiner dyan. So, if the examiner asks you more questions um, before your task 3, then, um, medyo challenging yun kasi hahaba yung part 2. No? Example, tell in detail about your dream house. So, for example, i-recall ko yung house ni Iron Man sa Iron Man 2 what it looks like, yun yung gusto kong bahay. Diba? Explain ko na ito ay made out of concrete, glass, and metal. It's located in Malibu, California. Describe the interior. I want it to be a minimalist. But I want to have 50 rooms. O, wala kang pakialam. Eh. Gusto kong bahay ito eh. Mag-isip ka lang sa'yo. Kung gusto mo, dalawa lang yung room. Ikaw yun. Pero kung gusto ko 50 rooms, ako yun. Diba? Originality, genuineness. That's who I am. Um, floor, possibly hanggang two floors. So, medyo malapad at malawak yung gusto ko sa house. So, furniture, I don't want to have as much furniture. Kasi ang clumsy ko, eh. ayoko na mga babasagin masyado. But, definitely, I would like to collect some action figures. So, yun yung i-display ko sa house. Exterior, I don't have, I don't want to have a lawn or garden kasi it requires maintenance. Pero I want to have a pool kasi sa Malibu, California, malapit siya sa beach. So, kapag nag, nagkaroon ka ng pool doon, parang overlooking mo yung beach, infinity pool as you watch the sunset. So, ganun mo siya i-assess. So, i-discuss mo na siya. My dream house is the one that I saw in the Avengers movie, Iron Man 2. It was really a fantastic house as I saw it. Wow. Describe mo na. Yun yung mga details na sinulat mo. Okay? Next, name a TV show you like watching. Right now, I'm going to go full-blown on this. So, ganito ko siya i-discuss for two minutes. Well, I'm not really particular in watching television. But during Saturdays and Sundays, I watched this TV show called The Pawn Stars. This is shown on History Channel at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So this program is about buying and selling, in which people will come into the shop to have their items appraised for its historical and monetary value. The TV show is hosted by the family of Harrisons based in Las Vegas. They have had this company for over 100 years now that 
has been passed down from four generations already, including the old man who just recently passed away, the third owner of the shop, and his son Rick, together with his grandchildren, Corey and Chumley. The program is about people asking for the value of the items so that they can exchange money from it, and they would be giving historical significance to it. Let's say a pen used by a senator who signed a treaty in 1892, so definitely it would have as much value as they would expect. And I like the program because this is another way to learn about history, because we learn about history in a fun way, in a way in which we can have the proof that they actually exist due to the items that they have left behind. That's why I like this TV show a lot. That, that's it. That's the end of how I would be able to discuss this TV show. Next is traveling. Okay, pwede mong i-copy to, practice mo. Uh, meaning of success, yes, another task card. What if I'm not familiar with the topic? Use the questions themselves to give you some ideas to discuss about the topic given. Root word technique like sea landscape. Recall mo, sea is a body of water, landscape is a land formation. So sea landscape is a land formation in the sea. So recall mo, oh, si Ariel is a little mermaid. Nako po siya sa, sa, sa rock, so that's a sea landscape. Lean sea landscape, nasa ilalim siya ng tubig. Yung nasa ibaba ng tubig na mga rock, rock formation yon Magkaiba yan, ha? So you have to be really careful with regard to vocabulary in which you use your speech. And then, yeah, ito na yung mga some details pa. Remember the TE3 rule? Tell them what you're going to tell them. But not, you know, I'm going to tell to you about, diba? So, tell them, discuss mo na lahat, and tell them what you told them. That is why I like this program. That is why I like this a lot. That is why this is the story. That is why this is what happened. Okay. Task 3. It's actually the most challenging part, all right? You will be asked with more abstract questions here, which actually might make this even more difficult. So listen to the questions carefully. Sometimes you can ask the examiner to repeat the question again by saying, can you please repeat the question? But most of the time, the examiners will not repeat the question, but at least you tried, and at least you sounded polite. That's the, the challenge here. It's the one that we want to achieve. Answer immediately as soon as the question is asked, which could be really difficult because it's unfamiliar chart. It's uncharted waters, you know? unfamiliar topic. Answer the questions directly and make sure that you have explained your answers in detail. Kailangan may mga reasons yan dapat to prove your point. And speak as if there's no tomorrow. You do not want to be asked with so many questions. So you will be the one to take in control by telling the examiner as much detail as possible. Because if you're going to um, speak less, targeting ka ng targeting. Examiners, when they acknowledge na, oh, medyo nahihirapan ka sa topic na yan, puro doon tayo ngayon tatargetin. Diba? So, pagpasa natin yun. So, impromptu questions. What events in a person's life is most celebrated in your country? Diba? Events in a person's life. Perhaps weddings? Diba? Graduations? Diba? Or yung hallmark birthdays. Masa namin hallmark birthdays? Yun yung mga debut. Yeah. Mga 18th birthday, 60th birthday, 7th birthday. Yung hallmark birthday. Kasi nagsisimbolay siya sa atin ng iba't ibang stages in life. Yan. The most challenging aspect of impromptu speaking is in generating and organizing your thoughts. Sometimes when asked a question, your mind may flood with countless possible answers. Other times, you may draw a complete blank. The challenge will even be greater if your topic is on a subject you know nothing about. Also, sometimes your sensitivity to a topic may make it difficult for you to address it adequately. Regardless of what situation you may find yourself in, it can be very useful for you to know that the following methodologies can quickly help formulate and organize your off-the-cuff responses. The prep method is perhaps the easiest to use. You open by stating a point in the body of the topic. You outline reasons for stating this point and illustrate your examples. Your conclusion restates the point you first made. So prep method stands for point, reason, example, point. So in this case, question for task three, Kevin, tell me something about a place where you want to spend your holiday vacation. Malta is a wonderful holiday destination. So the candidate here, did not uh, utilize the words, same words found in the question, gumamit siya ng sarili. So yung holiday vacation, naging holiday destination, sabi niya, wonderful pa. Okay. So yun yung point. Now, kailangan mo express sa akin, bakit siya naging wonderful? Because this is a country drenched in history and offers an abundance of activities for travelers. Oh, can you give me some examples? Well, there are churches date back to St. Paul's era, catacombs and air raid shelters date back to Second World War with bastions, and there are also wrecks and places where you can take a dive. Of course, these are just some of the things Malta has to offer. It really is a wonderful holiday destination. So yun pong prep method. So isang tanong lang yan. 
Like, tell me about your favorite fruit. Banana is the fruit that I like the most. For me, banana is not only delicious and tasty, it's also nutritious. So whenever I go to the gym, for example, I will carry a banana or two in my gym bag so that whenever I get dehydrated, I could, you know, at least increase my potassium levels again. That's why I like bananas a lot. So, diba? So, that's how you do the prep method. Pwede siya sa caller, basta tell me about something. Tell me about this. Which is better? So, kailangan mo ipaliwanag. You can give the reason after giving the point and then magbigay ka examples to prove that meron kang um, evidence to back your claims up. And then, proceed tayo ngayon dito kay point, which is giving, again, the summary of what you have just stated. Which celebrations do you think will change the most in the next few years? Christmas. Diba? In the past, people used to celebrate Christmas together with the family, but now there are a lot of Filipinos abroad, which is difficult for them to return back home. But it's actually something that people do. But they can still celebrate Christmas by using social media. They can just post pictures, call their loved ones abroad using video chats and the likes. Differentiate an email and a handwritten letter. Well, an email is a letter sent electronically with the use of a computer. It's actually very fast and convenient, especially for documents. But a handwritten letter is, as the name implies, it is written by hand and it is much more personal compared to the former. Ang tapos na. Compare mo lang siya, yun lang naman ang task eh. Differentiate a journalist and a writer. Diba? A journalist has to go to the place where the story is, but a writer just only needs to use his or her imagination to make a story. So they are actually very different. Meaning of success, failure, happiness. A success, you have a goal. You do all the things you can to reach the goal. So once you reach it, that's success. You didn't reach it, that's failure. The feeling that you have when you reach it, that's happiness. And then, what is the difference between photograph and a painting? Tinatanong din yan. So paintings, di ba, is based on the perspective of the artist. Photograph is captured using a camera. So both of them depict image, but they accomplish them in different ways. Di ba? Ang simple lang. Who do you think are more fashion conscious, men or women? Today, I have seen that men are catching up in terms of fashion because they have a lot of options to wear. But I still believe that in terms of expression, um, females are still more fashion conscious compared to, to men. That's it. How does globalization affect fashion? You can mention things that happen to fashion positively or negatively when it comes to globalization. But globalization has definitely impacted fashion both positively and negatively. Well, it created a lot of jobs, factories, and stores which sell different kinds of products, especially clothes, shoes, and different kinds of garments. However, due to the mass production, it has also created a lot of waste in the process. So that is why I think globalization has both its advantage and disadvantage in this matter, specifically for fashion. Mm. Why do you think parents nowadays prefer home study rather than sending their children at school? It's a matter of safety and convenience. Lalo ngayon, di ba? We could expect that more parents would think that homeschooling is a lot better than a uh, traditional one na pupunta sa classroom kasi nga, pandemic, ano? Pwede mong ipasok yung mga relatable concerns natin, particularly what's happening right now, the current trends. What are the things that you can learn in the future that you cannot learn today? Or, or something that you would want to do in the future, pwede mo siyang include. Some people have the cunning ability to talk but not the ability to communicate. When you don't know, you have the opportunity to learn. When you do know, you have the opportunity to teach. And that's the end of your task 1, task 2, task 3. Now, um, po-proceed na po tayo dito sa mga lists of question. Okay? Do you see advantages in competition? Yes, competition allows people to get the highest quality material out of a product with the less amount of money. So when products compete against each other, the winner is the consumers. Okay. Describe the wedding traditions in the Philippines. Diba? I always see the wedding traditions in the Philippines where all of the men cry. I don't know. 
pinilit ata po sila. <laughs> Joke lang, alright? Well, yung tradition, so ano ba mga ginagawa natin dito sa pagkinakasal, di ba? So, naghahagis tayo ng mga kung ano-ano, no? Naghahagis ang bigas, naghahagis ang barya. Tama ba? <laughs> Patay pala yung barya, sorry. <laughs> alright? So, tell something about the meeting you had recently. Meeting, it doesn't have to be a formal one. It has to be uh, someone that you just, you know, um, meet a person, like wedding friend or family member. When was the last time you waited? Oh, I'm still waiting for her to come back. Oh, you know, so you don't have to be too figurative on your answers. You have to be straight to the point. Discuss a skill you would like to learn in the future that you cannot learn now. Pero mong sabihin due to your busy schedule. Let's say swimming or cooking. Gusto mo siyang pag-aralan kasi nga um, busy ka pa ngayon. Which do you prefer, working in big or small groups? Diba? I think working in small groups is what I would prefer more because it enables me to control the members easily. But working in big groups also can accomplish the goals and tasks quickly. Yeah. How do you spend your night? Tell me about the various forms of relaxation, like having a massage, drinking your tea. Different change, differentiate change in progress. Change is not always for the better, ha? Nagbago ka na. Dati inahatid mo ako. Ngayon, netext mo lang ako. Ingat. Diba? So, pag progress, lagi siyang for the advantage. Say something about the sports facilities in your hometown. Diba? Ano, ano ba yung mga sports facilities? Basketball court, badminton court. Meron kayong public pool. Then that's great. The key is authenticity. Stage fright is fear of feeling, acting, speaking, communicating, and performing in front of people. As you give yourself permission to become genuine, your fear dissolves into captivating connection. What to do before and during the test? So, relax. It's normal to feel mild inside your nervousness. Be confident by smiling. It also stretches your mouth muscles, which actually will help you for better articulation. Questions are sometimes being asked instantaneously. What can you say about the sports facilities in your hometown? As biglang tatanungin ka ng board games, di ba? So, pwede siyang mapunta agad sa ibang topic, jump from one topic to the next. And pray. Prayer is one of the most important things. If we pray na sana mag- maging confident tayo sa exam, sana good mood ang examiner. Kasi it all depends on the examiner. Na? Sana hindi siya nahirapan sa parking, sana hindi siya constipated, sana siya ay nilambing ng kanyang asawa. So, all the things we pray is actually one for the examiner and for us ourselves as well. Be prepared. Practice speaking. With somebody who speaks fluent English, practice with your friends, family members, and your coaches. Huh? Try to familiarize yourself with topics you don't know. Practice talking, answering in detail because it gives you better chance in um, letting yourself be assertive and talkative in the examiner's perspective. Be willing to talk. The examiner is expecting to talk to a positive, intelligent, and courteous candidate. If the examiner offers you to shake your hand, return his or her handshake firmly. We don't actually do handshakes anymore because of the pandemic. I-limit nila itong pakikipagkamay, so hindi ko na ituturo ito. Uh, but if mag exam ka in the future, ang tamang pakikipagkamay po is one hand, magtatouch yung webbing sa pagitan ng thumb at saka ng forefinger. Tapos, grab it. Two strong pumps bago mo i-let go ang kamay. Because sometimes in life, we have to let things go. Huh? Charat. Okay. Simple answers do not mean one-word answers. Kailangan meron siyang sentence. Show that you're in control by talking freely. Kailangan just have to let yourself flow. Lose all that um, stuff in you, in your head, in your mind, in your mouth. But a complicated answer does not necessarily mean the correct one. Kevin, tell me about your favorite shop. My favorite shop is Bench Body, located in SM Mega Mall. Just a trivia. This is the largest feasible mall when it comes to leasable space in the entire world. And it's located in Mandaluyong City, which accidentally where the National Center for Mental Health is also located. So, wala akong pakialam doon sa ano bang trivia yan or mental health or what. Uh, sa NCMH or what. But, what I'm trying to tell you is that if you answer like that, complicated siya, hindi niya na hit yung point. Although sinabi mo yung shop, hindi mo siya na-explain. Dapat ang path na pinili mo is explain mo what is the shop good about why this is your favorite. Because you can find all the things you need here. From garments, perfume, antiperspirant, di ba? Mga towels, tissues, mga toiletries, sandan. Ano pa? Uh, bakit mo siya gusto compared sa ibang shop? Pwede mo rin gamitin yung path na yun. Diba? So, this is a one-stop shop. Hindi mo na kailangan pumunta sa iba't ibang shop. Hmm. 
Don't be shy. Answer questions clearly and concisely. So, what not to do? Never tell the examiner that you're nervous or blink your eyes too much. Do not shake the examiner's hand if ever na sa soon ka pa mag exam uh, mas later ka pa mag exam Don't shake the hands of the examiner na sobrang basang-basat, malamig na malamig ang kamay. Kaya ipapatong po natin ang ating hands sa lap kapag di natin siya ginagamit. We actually use hand gestures when talking kasi we appear more confident in doing that. Pero kapag nakipag uh, kamay ka, syempre dapat tuyo yan. So medyo punas-punas mo lang yan sa skirt or sa pants mo habang nag exam But if you can carry your handkerchief with you, that's actually better. Do not cut the interview questions with short and one-word answers. Do not wait for another question. Do not digress. Diretso, straight to the point. Do not hesitate for too long in your answer. Do not repeat information you already gave. Do not overuse the words I and will. I will, tulad dong sa grammar, do not, that's a promise. Why are you making a promise to the examiner? Do you want to see that examiner again? Of course not, because I want to make this my last examination. So, never say I will. Uh, fluency is as important as grammar. Fluency, pronunciation, more important than grammar. So, huwag ka masyadong conscious dun sa grammar at saka vocab. Do not expect the examiner to give you feedback on how well you performed. And do not worry if you cannot answer easily. The examiner is trying to find your ceiling. Desire, take note that the distance between success and failure can only be measured by one's desire. So, from this point on, the question as to how far you are from your goal is a matter of how much effort you put into practice, is how much effort you want to enhance your craft and skills. And we would be doing that, seeing if you would be improving through the speaking practice that we'll be doing soon. That will be the end of your speaking skills enhancement for today. Have a nice day, everyone. God bless and good luck on your test. Bye-bye.